Hey guys, Paul McLean here, and I've got a special treat for you. I, I've been in this office for now, I mean, I've been doing this thing for 14 years, and um, I, I've repeatedly walked by Daniel's office and heard him on the phone, and I'm like, dude, he's so good with like what he says, how he says it, and also understanding why he says what he says. And you could just tell because when you communicate on the phones, it's not just what you say, it's what they hear. And a lot of times what they hear is is derived from why you're actually saying the word you're saying it because that invokes the tone, the speed, the pitch, right? And um, and he's just killing it. So I sat, I was like, man, I got to get him on and really break this down because I think this is going to serve you very well. We always say 80% of the phones um, or do you say 80% of this business is the phones? Like if you could just get good on the phones, I mean, it's pretty simple. You just go out there, you sit with clients, you serve them, put them first. They've already, I mean, who who asked you to come to their house if they're not interested? Who fills out a form if they're not interested? Now you're at their house. It's not that deep, but but the phones is so important. And so guys, today we're going to go through everything. We're going to break it down. So um, hopefully my intro gave you enough time to grab a pen and a piece of paper. Maybe you grab an iPad and you can type, but take some notes. We're going to break down the psychology behind the phones. We're going to talk about phone script. We'll do some role play. We're going to do some objection handling. And trust me, I don't know a lot of things, but I've heard a ton of people, Daniel, come into the office. Some man, there's, you know, so nervous like I was when the person picks up the mm. phone, they just stutter and then they hang up the phone. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and that's a process a lot of times to get good because you weren't like that day one, but you've just been diligent, man. You know, you showed up to the office. Um, in fact, remember when you started coming to the office in Asperia mm-hmm. downstairs? Yeah. Dude, how many people were down there when you were down there when you first got there? I think when I first got there, I mean, there in the morning, yeah, there wasn't a, there wasn't a ton of people there. In there was the morning. no one. Yeah, there was like pretty much no one. I, I think, think like I think Ernest would be there sometimes. Well, dude, like you would, but, always, yeah. but you were always there. Yeah, like I'd go in the back because we that was back when we had the podcast room mm-hmm. behind, right? And um, dude, you were always there, mm-hmm. and you were there seven a.m., seven thirty. You were there first, and then you would be there like nonstop. You were so disciplined. Which is pretty cool, man, because that gave me an opportunity to really get to know you. Mm-hmm. You know, we would go grab something to eat and, and do like, um, you know, you've been somebody that just always was disciplined, always cared about serving people. Um, we had great re- conversations about how much you just really enjoy serving people and how you love people. And I mean, it was just, it, it, I got to know you pretty well. Mm-hmm. And so, by the way, if you're not going to an office, you should because it gives you an opportunity to connect with people and build relationships. But, um, dude, it's it's pretty exciting to see where you've come. Hall of Fame producer, congratulations. Thank you, man. It's 400 families yeah. in a year. That's a big deal, man, your yeah. first year. And think about it, dude, you sucked, you mm. know? Meaning, <laughs> relative, <laughs> like, yeah. you, that was, that's going to be your worst year. Yeah. Like, how do you not get better, mm-hmm. right? And, um, but what I want to do real quick, as before we get into this, is, like, what did it look like in the beginning when you were calling these families? Was it kind of a struggle to book the appointments what was the biggest struggle you had was a mindset was it just skill set um because i know if you're anything like i and i didn't ever ask you this question i don't know your answer but dude it was really difficult for me in the beginning like i was Mm -hmm. not good at all um what did that look like for you and how did you get past that yeah i think it was it was different for me because i never had did anything on the phone right like the previous job that i came from it was it was all face to face so really just kind of i guess calling people and having to you know do the do the script and kind of figure out how I was gonna book the appointment was was really my struggle was that confidence on the phone. So what really helped me though is when I stayed plugged into like Matt Smith's dialing training or I would just be plugged into all the videos and I would even have the video playing while I was dialing. So I'd be in the office. Like you said, nobody was really there. So I'd have Matt Smith on or you, your old dial videos you had on. And then I would just kind of bounce off of that. And it was just the repetitiveness, I think. I think it was just getting through a lot of dials through the day, you know, staying there and just dialing. Even, you know, if, if I sucked in the beginning, cause I did, I just kept dialing, kept dialing. And then that's how I, I think I got a lot better. That's good, man. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a massive tip. So, so if somebody's dialing, um, do you suggest like them have, even if they're not, it's on a TV, if it's their iPad and in the background, they can hear like somebody talking about <clears throat> phones and what to say and how to say it, that's, that's, issue pain or they're helping a lot of families is it good to have that in the background so you can kind of gauge a deviation okay like i'm saying this way they're saying it this way i need to tweak this yeah i think that i think what what helped was the tonality because i need i needed to figure if i was too high or too low so when i heard those calls you know with the trainings and i knew that i was matching that tonality on the phone and that really helped me i think now like 
where I've gotten to on the phones is, is I tell my agents the same thing is your mind in the beginning needs to kind of be where, you know, in the right spot as far as we're calling another human being. You're not calling like some, you know, tiger or some gorilla or some crazy that you're calling another human. And if we could understand how we operate as humans and that, you know, the normal thing to do is object or deflect. And we know that that's just the normal thing then it's real easy to kind of move to the next point that you need to get to. So like, for example, man, I mean, like, I think like, you know, when we're interested in buying a pair of shoes, for example, I think that's the best thing I could relate it to. You know, you want shoes, you know, you need them. If you walk into a shoe store in the mall, you know, so some sales guy's going to come up to you and say, hey, man, you know, can I help you with anything? Your first thing is going to be like, oh, I'm just looking, mm-hmm. you know, because we just deflect. Even though we know we need, we want, or we, we're interested, we kind of come up with these things that kind of try to push people. So that's why I, I really got good at questions on the phone and objection handling because I just knew it wasn't real. I knew they filled out the form. They, they wanted the help. They know they needed it. And I just had to kind of, you know, talk in such a way to where I can get them to, um, you know, book the appoint, appointment that's, with dude, me. That's yeah. so good. Do, do you think that somebody, um, like, like an agent that's just getting started or they're maybe dialing, booking appointments, calling these families, that when a client gives like a complaint, because I think you're right, it's like a knee jerk reaction. It's not mm-hmm. real, right? Like, you know, I always think about it. If I'm at the, you know, at Walmart buying toilet paper on a toilet paper aisle, somebody came up and was like, yeah. hey, you know, um, do you want me to help you buy some toilet paper today? I'm like, I'd be like, no, nah, I'm just looking around. I do, I'm not looking around. <laughs> like, I don't window shop toilet paper, yeah, but I yeah. would say that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so that just, I, and I love that point. That, that proves that it's just a knee jerk reaction. It's just like, an, almost a, a response by what's inherent or default or what, what we've been conditioned to do. But do you think an agent that really struggles on the phone that they, they take that response and they allow that to shift the perspective of the value and how the client really does need this? Like they take it instead of it as a complaint or knee jerk reaction, they take it as that's just how they really are. Do you think that's kind of a big reason why most people probably struggle on the phones? I think that's one of the big reasons. I think that, you know, when you hear someone say, you know, already took care of it or I'm not interested, or if they say something like that on the phone, I think agents, new agents, especially because I I was, I was there once. So where you kind of would take that and be like, okay, no problem. You know, and then just kind of let them off the phone. So I think it's not challenging the people too enough on the phone to, you know, to get the appointment, which I think that that is a struggle, you know, and I think that if we can realize if we can kind of come to um, a belief that, you know, what they're saying isn't real, they did fill out the form, they do want our help. We just need to ask the right questions and, you know, position them in such a way to where we can get in front of them. So, I mean, I think, um, you know, camping on this real quick before we go into like the actual phones mm-hmm. and, and role play, like the mindset part of it. I think this is such a big part. You know, um, I, I see, Daniel, a lot of the struggle an agent has. When they, when they call me up and they say, man, I, I'm not booking the amount of appointments I should be booking or what mm-hmm. have you, um, that they have kind of almost convinced themselves that the lead isn't any good, mm. right? Or that this lead type just doesn't work out that well. And they're almost just like convincing themselves of something. And then they say things as far as pitch or tone or speed. They're, they're almost like doing it in such a way that's causing them to validate the verdict they've come to, which is this lead is just blank, not good, mm-hmm. or I don't book enough, or they yeah. this and that. Did you have any of that in the beginning? And then how did you combat that? Because I think when agents can overcome that, they their their booking ratio goes through the roof because it's such a mental thing mm-hmm. you know d- did you ever have that kind of struggle or or you had a, a, a sequence of a bunch of hang-ups or objections or no books and you kind of were almost thinking like mm-hmm. man this just sucks or this just like yeah yeah it definitely starts to beat you down you know like in the beginning as a new agent when i would get objections or or I wouldn't book any appointments. And I, and I got, you know, I think everybody gets in that thing where you want to blame something. Accountability is a big deal, right? And when you can do that, that's when everything gets better. And I think that I did in the beginning kind of find ways to blame the people or the leads or, hey, they don't want this or, you know, that voice that we have in our head and everybody goes through it. But I think, man, the opportunity is just too good here. You know, I think if you could really convince yourself every day, the opportunity we have in the life insurance industry and what we're able to do and the families we're able to protect, I think that will push that extra, you know, that extra two, three hours of dialing to, to make sure we do land a couple appointments. And if we dial till nine and we only have four, well, then that's what it is. But at least we have those four families to go out and see tomorrow. That's that's so, phenomenal. Yeah. So so let's move on. But the, just to kind of recap the mindset part, that what Daniel said is, is have some training in the background mm-hmm. because i think that helps with not um having a head fake where you know sometimes you, like i used to think i was saying it just like the person that was helping all the families was saying it mm-hmm. you know then i listened to myself in a recording 
Okay, so I was like, dude, why don't you record yourself? So I recorded myself and I listened to it back and I was like, dude, I, I didn't, I had no idea. I said it like that and I said it with that tonality and I didn't know, I forgot all that, you know, I wasn't saying it, mm-hmm. but we'll convince ourselves of that. But I think if it's plain and it's like right there in the background, it's so much easier to kind of understand how far off we are and how we're yeah. really not saying it. Exactly. And I think that's yeah. a big, big point. And then the other point is understanding, like you said, man, like what we have is so unbelievable. These families sent in a form. This is one of the most valuable services that they could ever get mm-hmm. and that you're called to help them. Like, think about this. Like, thank God that they've, we're providing some to change his lives. That's just a fact. Like somebody, everybody's going to die. Mm-hmm. And when they do, like, like, I love what Sean said. He's like, man, we have helped. He's like, the number that meant the most to me is like when America talked about how much like protection we've put in place mm-hmm. and dude, over like the next, like, you know, yeah, d- decades, there's going to be clients that pass away all across the country and because of you, Daniel, and because of you, all these agents that work with FFL, their family is going to be provided for. So when you're calling this lead, if you really remind yourself of that, like you said, like how great that is, then you're not going to buy into this this different version of the value of what you're offering and, and, the, and how the client should see it, right? You're not going to say, well, it's not that important because the clients are not interested. Oh, well, maybe it's not that important. Maybe I'm bugging them because they said they already got No, 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 no. That's not the case. It's that's the truth is it's de- it's invaluable to them, but it's just a knee jerk reaction. So you keep your mind right and you don't screw up the the rest of the results or you know that you're going to get from these other leads based off of the first sequence that you had in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I think that's such a big deal. Um, when do you talk? Let's talk about like activity wise. Um, like when when's a good time to start making your first phone call? Like what time should somebody start dialing? I mean, I think the eight to ten hour. From eight to ten is really like really good hours, you know. To make sure you you make sure you make your first dial by eight. Those two hours, I don't know, they're like really good hours to be on the phone dialing. You know, people had their coffee, they're already in you know better mood, and they're already kind of woken up. And uh, I don't know, I find that that's kind of like a sweet hour. And then also like even from five to nine. I mean, I never really in the beginning dialed late. I think I would dial to like four, five, and then I'd call it a day. And changing that made such a big difference and i think that if i wouldn't have changed that last year i wouldn't have hit hall of fame is dialing those extra hours even when everybody was out of the office you know so yeah so um do you think like knowing that you're the one the last one in the office that that does anything for your self-confidence and self-esteem that probably allows you to book appointments you normally wouldn't book because of what level of confidence you have knowing that you're the last one here yeah, I think it's because, you know, you're working harder than everybody else. You know, there could have been maybe 10 people that day dialing with you and then everybody's gone. It's just you. The office is empty. And I think you do get a little kick from that. And you're like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm giving up extra time at home or, you know, I could be doing this or doing that. But, you know, I'm here. I'm doing this. So I think it does kind of up that confidence where you're like, man, I'm working harder than everyone else. And I'm going to land these appointments. So, yeah, it's definitely. That's, that's good, man. Yeah. I didn't think about it like that, but it's almost like you, 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 you build your deserve more. Like I just deserve more. Mm. And so, cause most agents on here, I mean, like I'm telling you, like I was so like, I lacked so much confidence in the beginning and I had all these reasons why, like I'm too young. I don't have enough experience. You know, these, these, these families I was calling was 2006 that they didn't even have their house no more. Mm. How do you sell mortgage protection? I mean, all these different things that were going to cause me to go to failure. And one of the things that now that you say, that I look back, it's like, I built a lot of confidence because of my work ethic. Like I was showing up there early and I would stay late. It was a non-negotiable. And I think that's where I pulled my confidence from that allowed me to kind of get those extra that I wouldn't have gotten. And in the beginning, if I didn't get those little extra families to protect, mm-hmm. I don't think I'd be in business, you know? And it's like that that underlying thing that's not as easily seen, but like it's underlying that matters so much, like the deserve more, the confidence that comes from that extra mile. Um, so do you have any non-negotiables on dial day? Like where you like when it comes to hitting appointment goals or lead strategy, like any like things where you're like every week this is a non negotiable as far as when I start dialing, I gotta hit this amount, like anything like that that's really helped you put the blinders on and stay focused? Uh non negotiables. I mean I would say just making sure I get on the phone on time. Uh there's time I mean, I'm still human. There's times that I make you know, I kinda wake up and I get somewhere late and it, and I pay for it, you know, that week. Um on my you know, as far as how many families I'm helping, it really does cause it to really get affected so i would say yeah non-negotiables that i really try and hold on to is making sure that i'm just on the phone on time making sure i'm getting those dials out um also making sure you're doing enough dials i think that 
people, I think new agents give up too easy. I think once you start to dial the phone, if you're not getting the result that you expect or want, then sometimes you kind of call it a day early. So I think a non-negotiable is just making sure that you have a goal, if it's 12 appointments, even if you're just starting out and you got a goal of 10, just really make sure that you hit that goal and just stay stay at the office until you hit it. You hit it. Yeah. So if, if you're, if it's five o'clock, mm-hmm. you want to go home, <laughs> Joy's like, I got some nice dinner. Yeah. I just cooked. <laughs> yeah, it's your dinner. favorite it's, meal. It's definitely happened, yeah. But you're at eight appointments, mm-hmm. and your goal is to hit 15. Do you leave the office? No. No, and I'll stay until 9, you know, until people are telling, you know, where you can tell it's 9 o'clock, you're calling people, and they're like, oh, why are you calling me? You know, and then I'll kind of say, okay, well, I did everything I could. I think that, you know, right there is like, I did everything I could today. Yes to get the appointments I needed. And if I still came up short, then tomorrow I'll do dialing in between appointments. I'll door knock. I'll do what needs to be done. But say just yeah. do what you got to do, you know? Dude, I, I think uh, a cold meal at 9 o'clock, knowing that you did everything you could, yeah. tastes better than the hot one where you know you're mm-hmm. sitting there and you left with seven appointments. Yeah, and you still got a microwave, so there you go. Exactly. <laughs> but, dude, I'm telling you, man, like I, I, I agree so much. I remember mm-hmm. making those dials at like 9 o'clock, 9.05, 9.10, because I'm like, dude, I got one more to get, just one more. And I'm making that those last dials. And it didn't matter what they said or didn't say. A lot of times I did book it, right, because mm-hmm. I got paid for going a little extra mile. And a lot of people after 9 that pick up the phone, most people pick up the phone after 9 anyways. Like mm-hmm. the uh, average of answering, like if we say like an answering ratio, it's so much higher, right, because like, People that call you after nine, you, they're usually not a telemarketer, and you're not. Mm-hmm. So they p- typically pick up the phone, yeah. right? It's like calling somebody at seven thirty. They're not. It's usually not a telemarketer. It's too early, right? And so I think I think that's so good. Let's talk about um, phone scripts. So when we look at lead types, like have you worked just a vast variety of of different leads as far as internet, more what, what lead types have you worked? Uh, last year, I mean, I really looked at all the leads that I worked because I knew that I, you know, I hit Hall of Fame. And I, I would say about 95% of the business that I wrote last year was all instant internet leads or three month old leads, you know, just a lot of internet leads really, because I couldn't get my hand on a lot of mortgage in the beginning. So I was just working, you know, what I had access to. I, I think I did a little bit of Facebook in the beginning, but really just stuck to kind of getting my hands on the quantity. Okay. Uh, not really so much <clears throat> on the quality, I guess, right? Because you got the $20 Facebook sure. leads. So I just stayed on getting as many leads as I could on dial day. So do, do you use phone burner? I don't use phone burner. Personally, I tried it. It wasn't for me. I just like dialing the phone. So I have two phones. So I'll dial one and I'll dial the other one and I'll mute mute the lines. So you basically have created your own phone burner. Yeah. Well, I mean, you taught me that because you had that. You used to dial two phones. So yeah. I started doing that and I got used to it. So I got really used to just doing it that way. So where if it was working, I didn't want to change it. So if you're doing some of that work. Well, dude, you know what I think would be great? I was talking to um, Jeremiah about this. I said, because he said the same, I like, I like dialing. So why don't you have one phone calling on phone burner? And then you call mm-hmm. on the other phone. Like think about how much more productive that. He's like, man, I'm gonna do that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, when you have two phones and, and and if somebody picks up, they both pick up, just hang up on one person and mm-hmm. they call them back. Yeah. But it, your productivity just goes through the roof, man. Because like my goal was get my appointment goal done, and then I can move on to build. I could earn the right to now do recruiting efforts, build my business. Mm-hmm. But I had to hit my goal. But if I didn't hit my goal until nine at night, well, now I was there at nine o'clock at night, and I didn't get to recruit, which means I got a longer process to eventually get out of the field because I haven't recruited, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a good way to do it. Um, let's do role play, man. So we're calling the Instant Internet Life Lead. Um, you say ring, ring, I'll say hello, and, and let's go through, you know, booking that appointment. Okay. Uh, ring, ring. Hello, this is Paul. Hey, Paul, this is Daniel. I'm one of the local underwriters here in San Bernardino County. I was just giving you a call regarding the request that you had filled out online for life insurance protection. I had your date of birth here as 08. 6 1965 is that correct yeah that's correct okay perfect so paul my job's real simple i'm just the underwriter so i just handle the medical part of things now there is no physical exam meaning no blood no urine no saliva so my job's just to complete a visual and verify that you're not in a wheelchair a hospital bed on oxygen and that you don't weigh like a thousand pounds that's not you is it paul no uh-uh. okay perfect so i also just to um just to verify i got your delivery address here is one four six eight Rock Trail Road in San Bernardino. Is that correct? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So it looks like they got me dispatched out in your area the next couple of days. Um, are mornings or afternoons typically better for you? I'd say probably uh, morning. Okay. Morning. Okay. Because I see you're here at your 71. So are you, you're retired now? Yeah. Got it. So do you have any doctor's appointments coming up next couple of days? 
Uh, you know what? I think I have a checkup on like Thursday this week. Other than that, on wide open. Okay. Thursday's no worries. Th- those days I'm actually not in the field. So I have tomorrow or Wednesday. I could either do uh, 10 a.m. or I could do a three, three o'clock. What would work better? Uh, 10 a.m. would be a lot better. 10 a.m.? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'll put you in for 10. Can you do me a favor, Paul? Yeah. Can you grab a pen and paper real quick so I can give you some information of mine? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so my name's Daniel. Uh-huh. My last name's Rosales. And my state license number, which also ties me to your file, is 407-6893. Okay. You got perfect. that? Yep. Can you read that back to me real quick? Yeah, 417931. It's 407 6893. Got it. Now, Paul, real quick before I let you off the line, are there any big dogs I'll see out front that might try to kill me when I get there? I'll be okay. No, no dogs. Got it. And you want me to just park off in the street or in the driveway? I don't uh, got either, I, either way. Okay. Yeah. I don't got any oil leaks. So if the driveway's open, I'll park there. Okay. But all right, Paul, I look forward to seeing you, um, you know, on Wednesday at nine o'clock um i'll see you then 10 a.m right 10 a.m yeah 10 a. M. all right 10 a.m yeah, kind of lost there but oh um, well, that was good but man. usually that's all yeah that's all the call now that doesn't go it doesn't go like that all the time right absolutely not no so i mean that was kind of <laughs> like the 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 one where you're like okay that just flowed well and it, and it does happen and it does not, happen it does happen yeah so give me um like the most common objections that you get calling the instant internet life leads um uh, i'm not interested and the, when is that usually in the beginning Usually okay. when I call, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm not interested. Okay, let's do that. So let's do another role play in the beginning, and I'll, I'll hit you with that. Right, go ahead and go ring, ring. Okay, ring, ring. Hello, this is Paul. Hey, Paul. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> hey, Paul, this is Daniel. I'm the local field underwriter here in San Bernardino County. I was just getting back to you regarding the request you submitted online for life insurance protection, and I had your date of birth here as 4-22-1943. Yeah, man, I'm not interested. You got it. No worries, Paul. Now, um... No worries. I know you're not interested, but when you did fill it out online, what were you what were you interested at that time? Were you just looking for information on what it would look like to take care of a burial, or you know, were you just looking for just some general information on life insurance? Like, what were you thinking? Yeah, you know, I don't know, man. I, but I just I'm not really interested any longer. No worries. I got it. I'm assuming you spoke to someone already regarding the pricing or something on the products you were looking for. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. I'm actually not a captive agent, Paul. So that's exactly why I'm calling you. I'm just a local underwriter that's assigned to just get you all the different options that you can go over. So, um, you know, just the guy that's just get you the information. So the reason of the call was just to verify the delivery address Mm -hmm. so that I can get this out to you. Okay. So I had the 16025 uh, Camino Road. Is that correct? That's right. Got it. So they have me in your area the next few days, um, getting this to a couple of your neighbors. I could either get it to you in the morning or the afternoon. What would be better for you? Uh, I think afternoon probably better, man. You're just going to drop it off. Yeah, so they have me just drop off the information and go over the programs. Now, what they do have me do, Paul, just because these plans are non-medical, is they have me just verify that, you know, you, first of all, you are who you say you are, that you're not bedridden or on any oxygen, and that you're not in a wheelchair. So, okay. And then we'll go over a couple of programs. If you have any questions for me, then I can answer them for you. But it usually takes about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, cool. Got it. So you go ahead and grab a pen and paper for me real quick. Um, I also, real quick, I have the 1 o'clock or the 3 p.m. What would work better in the afternoon? A uh, one. So, one so o'clock. that's, and then it just goes on with the rest of the script. Yeah, I right? think, I think with the non, non interested things, so I can kind of break that down a little more. I think uh-huh. that when they say that, I always agree, right? I think it's always going back to agreeing with what sure. I can completely understand that. No worries, Paul. I completely get it. And then I'll ask another question. Like, do hey, you listen, do that after every objection for the most part? Understand 100%. Every objection. Perfect. Every objection. I'm like, hey, that's completely okay. But then I'll ask a question to get back in control. So then I'll say something like, hey, Paul, I completely understand you're not interested, but you filled it out. So you were interested. So did you become uninterested because, you know, the pricing, you kind of got some pricing. It was kind of too much. Or did you apply for insurance and you got denied? And then they'll just say, yeah, some guys, you know, they called me and they said it was X amount. I'll say, hey, that's exactly what I'm calling. My job is to get you all of the affordable options you originally inquired about. And, you know, then I'll kind of go that way. Yeah. So, so, so to kind of give some framework to objection handling, which I think is a big deal, mm. relate and then ask a question to get back in control. Mm-hmm. And so for anybody that's watching this, like a lot of times I forget what that next phrase was, right? You know, if, if they said I'm not interested, I forget to ask. Well, is it because you're not sure if you could, you know, afford it or because you weren't able to qualify for it? I, I would forget that, right? And what I realized is this. Um, it doesn't matter. Whatever question you ask puts you back in control. Mm-hmm. Relating is, is a first step because it, it takes away the whole arm wrestling match where they're trying to go back and forth with them. There's no there's, there's no battle here. Like, I agree with you. You know, that's the thing. I, so you've taken that yeah. away. But um, that's that's the that's the framework. Relate and ask a question. I remember having an, a client 
gave me an objection, and um, I forgot what to say afterwards. And I, no kidding, I, honest to God, it's a true story. Um, he said, can I just get a quote? And um, that was his question. So he was in control because he asked me a question, right? And um, I said, man, I'd love to give you a quote. And I see how that makes a lot of sense to get one. Um, but what color is your car? <laughs> and the guy was like, uh, uh, blue? Why? I said, got it. Well, listen, man, I'll be out there tomorrow. I got a five or seven. And I'm not <laughs> lying to book the appointment, man. That's crazy. And what I realized is that, like, it's just being in control, mm. you know? And it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, um, I would assume, Daniel, like, knowing, listening to you when you call and, and listen to how you overcome objections, that you, you pretty much have, have ingrained in you, like, all the objection handling workbook and the phone scripts. Like, you've internalized those, right? Yeah. It sounds like it's been practice, drill, mm -hmm. rehearsed. And I just want to encourage everybody to do that. Like if you're not doing that late at night or early in the morning, I just don't, I don't like that's, that, that, that's going to help you. Those are the answers, right? It's like, you know, you watch Wolf of Wall Street. I remember, and I can't remember what scene it was, but the guys, you know, running around when they got those penny stocks, he's like, this yeah. is, this is it, you know? And he's got his like, his objections. And, but if, if it works, why not have that down now? Do you want to wait to get going to get it down? No. You, a lot of times you internalize it by doing it active, like in the, you know, you're in the game, so to speak. And that's how you kind of internalize it. But mm -hmm. um, for a lot of you guys, I mean, if, if I were to say, hey, give me a quote and I put you on the spot, what would you say? And would it be what the objection handling workbook says? And if it's not, I'm like, you should, maybe it's a good idea to practice a little more, mm -hmm. right? Um, what are some other common objections you get, Daniel? Like I already took care of it. Maybe you already took care of it. Somebody already came out. Okay. So, so Daniel, listen, man. Um, we actually just had somebody come out. We're all we're all good. We got to squared away, man. Yeah, no worries. That's actually why I'm calling. I'm just the field underwriter. So my job is just to make sure that you're receiving all your incentives and benefits with the plan. Now, did you apply for this coverage last week or was it a few months back? You know, he came out like a week ago and um, we went through it all. And um, we got something that's in, in the process, but we're not too sure what's going on with it. Okay, that's perfect. I'm happy you got something. So my job, again, is just to get the information out to you here so you make sure that you have all your proper incentives and benefits with the plan. Um, the reason they put us in place is to make sure that what you have is state regulated and that you were placed in the correct risk class. Uh, it happens more times you could think, Paul, where you know someone applied for something, they have something in the process like yourself, and then I get to the home and I find that you know they're in the wrong risk class. They're actually paying you know, $40, $50 more than they should. So my job is to come by and just check it out. And if it is what it's supposed to be, then um, we leave it alone. If not, I'll fix it for you. It usually takes about 10, 15 minutes. And they got me right down the street tomorrow on Wednesday anyways. So I either have a 3 or I have a 5.30. What would work better for you? Uh, probably 3. 3? Okay, I'll stop by at 3. Is there any reason you wouldn't be home at 3? You'll definitely be home. Yeah, we'll be home. Okay, will the wife be there too? Yeah. Awesome. So let her know I'll be dropping by. What's her name? Because I don't want to be rude. I like got Natasha. There. Natasha. Okay, so let Natasha know. I'll stop by, review what you guys have. Um, do you have the paperwork and all that stuff? I think so. We got some kind of folder that was left. Okay, awesome. Can you grab that? Just make sure you have it ready so I get out of there quickly. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, Paul, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, again, my name is Daniel. And I'll see you. I love that, man. Yeah. And, and the one thing I want to point out, Daniel, is like when you said like any reason why you wouldn't be there, oh, you'll definitely be there. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just it, you're taking the posture of like I'm in control. I'm going out of my way to help you and serve you. I'm going to go out there free of charge and compare what you have to see if I can save you money and give you a better plan of more value. Like, why would I not make sure you're definitely going to be there? I got a ton of people to call. I got a lot of families to see. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a, a big deal of why they probably show up and why you book the appointment is because of just little things like that that really show them who you are, which is a high-level professional that's providing significant value to them that's going to far supersede the value you receive as far as a pay or check or whatever you get it doesn't come close to the value they get. And I think I can see that when you're calling, you know, your tone out or your pitch or speed. Yeah, I think that, you know, when that, that objection happens, I think what's important is like some new agents will might maybe bounce off that and say, hey, you know, I might be able to get you a better deal. Let me check what I got. Let me see. And then they'll say, dude, I don't want it. I'll hang up. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just like that approach of, hey, that's fine. I'm actually happy you got it. My job's just to review what you have and make sure that it's, you know, state regulated and that you're not in the wrong risk class. I think that comes across good with people and then making, sure. making them do something like make sure your policy's ready for me when I get there. Yep. And there's been a lot of times I got there, their policy was there and it was easily to just kind of get them something yeah. better, you know, so. that That's so good, man. And I think about that, like that that's a, a big point too. Like you might be just a small tweak away to from getting appointments booked at a much higher level or higher percentage because of that. Like when they say, 
like you're right, Daniel. I've heard many agents say, well, you know, I might be able to save you money. And then and then they just hang up. Mm -hmm. But because it's the wrong approach, it's, it comes across like it's for me. Well, wait, let me see if I can still get a deal. Mm -hmm. Opposed to the other way. And it, and it sounds similar, but it's vastly different. You know, and that's the difference between you being the professional that's going out of their way to serve them and being the, the captive salesperson that's just trying to make a dollar. And in the way you communicate what you say, it changes the way they see you from one to the other. And if they see you as the professional, they book. If they see you as just some salesperson trying to get a paycheck for their own good, then they don't. Even if it does make sense, they still won't do it. You and know? we have such good carriers. Uh, there hasn't really been too many times I've walked in the house, somebody has something in place, and I'm like, wow, this is an amazing policy. You know what I mean? Normally, right. we're going to have something that's going to beat what they got. And we have that confidence on the phone that we just need to get in front of them. We don't need to do anything over the phone. And, like, we can give you a better rate. We just need to get in front of these people because most most likely they're not going to have something as good as we, what we can get them. Yeah, so, and that's yeah. that's a beautiful position to know that mm -hmm. you're in. You know, when you yeah. go in, you can have that confidence. Yeah, absolutely. That I could reposition, and it's a lot easier to get somebody to, you know, take what they're already spending and, and put it somewhere of reposition where it's more valuable than to try to get them to come up with a whole new expense in their budget. And that's why I've always loved some clients that had it mm -hmm. because I knew that we could probably provide more value, and they already understood how valuable it was because they had it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, let's do let's do this. I'm gonna hit you with a couple more. So you call intro the script, and I say, Danny, listen, man, right now is not a good time, dude. We're, I'm busy. I'm running out of the house. Can, you gotta call me later. Yeah, no worries, Paul. I'll have you off the phone in 30 seconds. The purpose of the call really was just to verify the, um, some information we had here. I had your date of birth is 4 30 1942. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Got it. And the delivery address I have down for you is 16082 North Trail Road. Yeah. Okay, so my job's simple, Paul. Like I said, I'll have you off the phone quick. Um, I just have to come out, bring the information, go over the different programs with you and the wife. Mm -hmm. Usually takes about 10, 15 minutes. They just want me to verify that, you know, you and the wife still walking around. You guys aren't in a wheelchair. You guys don't weigh like a thousand pounds. Okay. That's yeah. not you, is it? No. Uh -uh. Got it. So real quick, then I'll be at your area tomorrow and Wednesday. I have either the afternoon or the evening. I have a three o'clock or I have a five thirty. Would work uh, better. Dude, you can't just send this to me in the mail. Yeah, man. I wish I could send it. Last thing I want to do is even drive out there. But my job is to get it to you since you requested it in order to verify that first of all, you know, like I said, you are who you are, and that you're still walking around. You and the wife can still do a few jumping jacks. Okay, it won't okay. take long, I promise. But I have the three or the five thirty tomorrow. Which one works? Uh, three thirty. The three thirty. Okay, I got you down for three thirty. Can you grab a pen and paper real quick so yep. I can give you my information? And you go right into and it. And I go right into it. Perfect. I love that. Now let's just say that you're you're trying to book me this week, right? You're giving me a time. Uh, Daniel, listen, man, this week didn't work. Um, could you call me back in like maybe the next two, three weeks? Okay, okay say that again. Do so, it. so yeah, my schedule's booked. Like, you're trying to schedule me. And I'm like, man, this week's really booked, Daniel, but why don't you call me back in maybe two, three weeks and we kind of go from there because yeah. it's just busy this yeah, week. No worries, Paul. I'm running behind here at the office as well, so we're really jammed. So I can't even really make a 100% promise that I can get out to you this week. But what I can go ahead and do to best accommodate you is – are you usually home in the afternoons or evenings? What are you? Yeah, doing? I mean, usually in the after, like evenings, like after five. So let's do this, Paul, just to make sure you get the information. We close this out. It won't take longer than 10, 15 minutes. Let me go ahead and put you in between appointments tomorrow. I, I can put you in between appointments around 545 to 615. We'll just kind of get this out of the way. Uh, just make sure you're there and then we'll, we'll, we'll take care of this. Should you be there by that time? Is that be a good time? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, yeah. cool. So I'll see you tomorrow. So usually how I go about it, just kind of like, it's more of like a quick set approach. Yeah. But just let them know it's going to be quick. I'm coming out, running behind as well. I think being busy, relating to them again, going back to relating yeah. to them, dude. If you're busy, I'm busy. You know what I mean? I, that's so good. If man. you're in a hurry, I'm in a hurry. Yeah. yeah. So. And I think it's like uh, if, if you're not booking a lot of appointments, typically it's because there's not as, enough value there mm. or there's not enough urgency. So I think like if it's if it's valuable and it's urgent, um, that translates into to a booked appointment. But if it's not, it's not meaning that if they pushed off like nah, next week, that means it probably just lacks urgency and value, you know? So like what you just did in that objection handling, and I just want everybody to catch this is like you brought more value to it and you made it more urgent, you know, and you related to them. It's the same thing. We go back to step one, you related to them and then you, and then you went to asking questions mm -hmm. and that's perfect, you know? So if anybody's like, you know, if, if they see a lot of times an objection, it just gives you clues to where you're at as far as, your value building and your ability to articulate and get them to feel the sense of urgency with it. And and when they do that, you came back and you, it was perfect. It's like, man, listen, I understand being busy. 
You know, my schedule, they got me managing multiple different counties because we're behind on all the families that are coming in and not, not enough field underwriters like myself. But listen, I'll put down some notes to best accommodate. This is exactly how you did it. You just related to them. And then you just play along with them, right? Mm -hmm. Like you go along, like, are you usually home after five? You know, and, and then I said, yes. Okay, great. Well, listen, I don't have a five, but I think I could squeeze you between appointments. And guys, that there too is a big deal because if you say between appointments, it builds urgency because it's like, man, he's got so many appointments. Everybody wants to do what everybody else is doing, right? So a lot of times I heard concept is it, it's that urgency, right? A fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. it, and, and so now you got so many points, you're going to put them between appointments. You already related in the way you related was I manage in multiple different counties. So you related to the busyness, but then elevated the busyness indirectly, not the same. So all that stuff is the psychology behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you go back to and say, listen, I, I, I can't. I don't have anything tomorrow, but listen, I'll, I'll go ahead and move, try to move my 6.30 and earlier and put you at that time. If it doesn't work, I'll call you back. All those things is urgency and value, urgency and value. And um, and it's and it's fun when you do it that way because you're in the right posture. Desperation sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, were you ever like dialing the phones and kind of like were desperate for appointments? Yeah. I think it was when I didn't have enough leads, though. I think when I had like a tiny little stack of leads, it's like, oh, man, I'm going to get these. I got to make sure I get appointments. So I think I came off the phone very desperate, even when they're like, oh, hey, can you, you know, can you call me back next week? I'm like, well, hey, it's just going to, you know, it's just going to be real, real quick. And I was just in a very, like, trying to lock them down just because I knew I needed the appointments and I had, I didn't have enough leads. So just have enough leads. I think that goes away when you have a ton of leads yeah. and you're like, oh, shoot, I got all these leads. I don't think you're worried about it. That's good. So, yeah. so if you're, if somebody's feeling desperate right now, and they're like, I, w I want to feel like I got the upper hand. Maybe it's just give yourself more shots. Yeah, just get just get more leads because then you have more dials. So even if you get, you know, objections or you get hang ups, so stuff happens on the phone, you're not going to be affected by it to where you come off desperate on the next call. Yeah, because no big deal. I got another yeah, person to no, call. It's no big deal. You got, a, you got a ton of leads to call. You're trying to get through the leads, that, you know. So I think that that really helped me a lot. I love that. That's mm -hmm. great. So get more shots and then sit back and understand your value you bring. Um, is a big deal. Any any last like minute comments you want to kind of uh, you know go through as you as we wrap up this segment on phone script and and uh, what have you? Anything that you got that you think would bring some value? Yeah, I mean, I would think that you know for anyone listening that's new agents, I think that you know just stay on it. You know, don't give up too quickly. You know, it's gonna it's gonna get it's gonna get rough sometimes, but the leads, you know, the people did fill out the lead, and like we talked about in the beginning, have your mind where it needs to be, where these people are just deflecting stuff. So as long as we relate and ask the right questions, we're gonna be able to get in front of the people and help them out, and the people are gonna thank you for it. I mean, I I can't count how many times I've had a lead and I remembered the lead that I called. And she hung up on me and I called her back and said, hey, I think we got disconnected. And I took it back to booking the appointment where I sat in front of her, protected her, and she was in tears and gave me a hug. So you just don't yeah. know. You know, you don't know, like, who, what family you're going to sit with. You don't know how bad they need it. So you just got to have that, you know, mind where you need it and just know that we're out there to serve these families and protect them. So That's awesome, man. Yeah, that man. Great, great tip. Yeah. yeah, so it's like the ones that sometimes you know, give the most resistance. Those are the ones mm. that become your clients for yeah. life, you know. And Absolutely. You, and, and then that's just the way it is with anything. When you go the extra mile and kind of like do the less, the, that next step that's uncomfortable, because it kind of sucks. You know, they hung up on you. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. they just hung up on you. Like, we don't want to talk, which is like a form of rejection. Like, I'm trying to call you. You freaking hung up on me, you know? Mm -hmm. And you call back like, hey, I, you know, hey, we got disconnected. But listen, real quick, I'm not a telemarketer. I'm not a solicitor. I'd rather mm -hmm. not be calling you. The only reason I'm calling you, you go back, take control yeah, back. and book it. And it's like, that's the one where, you know, they desperately needed you, you know, that's the one that they're paying way too much. Somebody took advantage of. That's the one that mm -hmm. really needs it, but got declined too many times. That's the one that, you know, it might pass away in a month. And, and it's like, you just need to press a little further. I mean, yeah. I just, I, that's so good. And mm -hmm. so true, man. I've seen it so many times in the last 14 years. So, um, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, thank, man you for, thank you for coming Thanks on. For having me on. That was great stuff, yeah, guys. Hey, um, make sure to listen to this over and over again. One of the things I think does help is this finding like a segment of, of a podcast, you know, and we had that in here where you could hear the role play. And um, when I was eating lunch or whatever, between my dials, I would listen to that over and over again, because again, it helped me get back on track and focus and put my mind in the zone. Um, we're not as, we're not like football players where we get in a huddle and start whacking each other at home. Like, let's go, let's go. Yeah. And you compartmentalize. This is a little different. You know, this is something where you got to sit back yeah. and, and not think of yourself and take your eyes off yourself long enough to put them on the client. And sometimes listening to this stuff between, uh, you know, dialing and uh, while eating a lunch or whatever will help kind of put your mind in the right frame as you move forward. So guys, make it a big week. Be strong. 
Stay steadfast. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.